Hey guys, what is going on here? I'm Haxus Bloodbane, and I'm here with another episode of Warcraft 2 and just talking about what's kind of going on in animation right now. Well, I can safely say that we have another week of updates coming up, and I still think um, they're trying to end a couple shows to make room for some newer stuff on Cartoon Network. But boy, was there a lot of news this week. Like, we got trailers after trailer. We got trailer after trailer this week. It was like, we got DuckTales. We got the theme song. We got the Server Sources of Evil theme song. Um, I actually I saw all of Steven Universe Wanted this week. So, there's that. And, you know, going into this next up, these, this summer, basically, I'm really excited. I have, um... Notifications for pretty much everything that's coming up right now. Um, I'm getting more Tangled the series this summer. I'm getting more premieres. Like, I'm going to see DuckTales this summer, which does have a premiere date now. If you haven't heard it anywhere, you'll hear it here. But, what can I say? Why don't we just start like we always do with what's premiering this week? We actually have on Sunday the 18th, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the 2012 series, is back. Which... You know, I haven't really covered a single new episode on that, but this one's called One Worlds Collide, and it's a it's a two-parter. So it says the new trail is I, I don't know how to pronounce this. It's like neutralizer, but spelled differently. Um, but whoever that is returns to New York City, more powerful than ever before, and joins forces with a dangerous and an unexpected ally. With help of Raphael Salamander and girlfriend Mona Lisa, the turtles fight back to defend their city. Like, I have no idea what any of that meant. To me, it's just words, honestly. I, I don't really know what to say. Um, but, hey, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I was around when I was a kid. It's around now still, so not much you can say beyond new episode premiering. Um, we also have the Powerpuff Girls 2016, of course. Um, it's called Take Your Kids to Doomsday, which is a fantastic title. I will not lie. Despite how bad the show is, it really does know how to do titles. And this is no exception here. Um, the girls spend a day at the professor with the professor at his boring office, only find that the office comes with a terrible secret. Now, I'm not the most avid Powerpuff Girls fan, but from what I gathered from the series, I thought the professor worked at home, like he had a home office. I'm not sure, like, I'm not a major... I, I could be completely wrong here, he might have had a job mentioned before, but... I don't know, like, I guess he'd have a lab somewhere, but I thought it was a home lab, because that's where he made the girls. He actually physically made them in a lab, so... I don't know. That that's a little bit eh. I'm not sure how to react to that. Um But yeah, Powerpuff Girls 2016 has been really polarizing and I don't expect this episode to be any less. Honestly, I just wait for Shadow Streak reviews of the episodes. That's honestly what I do. I just wait for his opinion usually. Um But Monday is like Monday, that's it for Monday. We actually don't have... We don't have that many, many shows in terms of um, Disney this week, I might point out. Um, Disney Channel seems to be on a hiatus right now. Because, yeah, I don't think we have a single episode from Disney Channel this week. Um, but on Tuesday the 20th, we... No, Monday the 19th, sorry. We have... Clarence Officer Moody, pieces of Mr. Reese's past are revealed when his old partner on the police force, Officer Moody, visits Aberdale Elementary. I don't watch Clarence, and I feel bad sometimes for saying that, because Clarence seems like it's a fine show. I probably would have watched it when I was younger, but honestly, I just can't really care. I don't know. It's probably a bad thing, but what can you do? Clarence is just one of those shows that, to me, it exists. It just is there on Cartoon Network. I don't really pay any attention to it. But apparently it does well enough because it got the amount of seasons it does. Although I often wonder how any of these shows are doing as well as they are. 
given the fact that all Cartoon Network seems to like to air as Teen Titans Go. So I sometimes do wonder, like, how... How does this work? How, how do these shows get any ratings? But I guess they have the app, I guess. When premieres are aired, I guess they get enough ratings to have the show actually be continued. Or they could just be burning it off. I think they're trying to burn Clarence and Uncle Grandpa right now. Which, I don't know, With when you're losing Adventure Time next year, I think, um, I think they're going to just clear out some of the older shows right now so they have established shows for when Adventure Time ends. Like, they have Steven Universe right now, but... As for exactly what they're going to do, I think OKKO OK Let's Be Heroes is going to come into play here. I think a couple of other shows will. I'm not I'm not sure exactly which ones, but they have a number of pilots people are excited for. I have seen the villainous shorts. I think they're okay. I, I don't know. It, it's shorts. Like, you can't really judge anything based on its shorts, since shorts tend to be... I don't want to see terrible, but... Shorts are not a good representation of what you're getting in terms of a TV show. Like, um, what was it? Mighty Magic Swords. I actually enjoyed those shorts a bit, but when the actual show premiered and you got just, you know, you just got this collection of really fast-paced humor that never slowed down. Yeah, that's fine in a two-minute format, but when you put it in a 11 or 22-minute format, it does not work in the slightest. But hey, um, Clarence and Uncle Grandpa, which also has a premiere that day, um, they, I'm still continuing to think they're burning them right now. They're trying to get rid of them. Um, because we have Uncle Grandpa Pizza Steve's Past, which Uncle Grandpa and the gang learn of Pizza Steve's Past stunt in the food service industry. Pizza Steve wasn't always the Pizza Steve they know and love. Uncle Grandpa, like... Okay, backstory episodes are fun. I will admit that, but... Like, even in the Steven Universe um, crossover, I think the only part about Pizza Steve I liked is when he got eaten by Amethyst. Like, I think that's the only thing I really cared about him. I actually... The one character I really liked a lot was the giant realistic flying tiger. Um, also, another character that wasn't bad was... Um, like, even Uncle Grandpa himself although annoying is kind of this, I don't know, nice annoying, like he's kind of the annoying that, okay, this is good in good in small bursts, but the other characters, I was just kind of, eh. I, th I think honestly, Uncle Grandpa does have a niche audience. And I think it appeals to that audience quite well, but as for just Pizza Steve, I don't know, I never really could get into him. Um. But yeah, that's all for Monday the 19th. On Tuesday the 20th, we have Clarence, Gilbin's Different. Gilbin's newly sprouted peach fuzz sparks a discussion about puberty that ultimately convinces Clarence to act more like an adult. On one hand, that sounds kind of like a funny premise. On the other hand, that is an exceptionally awkward premise to like even show to kids. Like, to even show on television, let alone in a kid's show. So... In my opinion, it takes a lot to, um, it, it takes quite a bit in order to, you know, appeal to, <laughs> I don't know, how would I put this? It, it, it takes a lot of work to actually make that work, and I don't know if Clarence of all shows can actually pull that off very well. I don't know, and remembering what happened with the creator and all and that sort of stuff it's just really it, this could be exceptionally awkward or it could be perfectly fine i think it's going to be perfectly fine but there's always that worry in your head um then we have uncle grandpa digging a hole which is uncle grandpa digs a hole which is the most vague title i have ever heard for a tv show episode ever I have no idea what this could be. He could just physically be digging a hole. I, will he dig stuff up in the hole? Will he... Is it metaphorical? I, I don't know. This it, It's so vague that you can't help but just stare at it and wonder what does it mean, even though it probably doesn't mean anything. <laughs> um, 
but yeah, that vague title leads us into Wednesday the 21st, where we have Clarence, cool guy Clarence. Clarence finds a fast friend in JT who shows him some cool new music, a new outfit, outlook on life, and a sweet rat tail. And then Clarence learn, leans into the rat rail lifestyle, discovering a whole new side of Aberdale he never knew existed. Which I, th I think that's the town he lives in. Don't quote me on that, but... I don't know, it feels kind of weird. I, I don't know, Cl Clarence is just one of those shows that... There's this vague awkwardness while watching it. I don't really like the character designs. It's, I don't know, I don't know how to put Clarence in all things. I, I don't know how to describe it, but... Um, yeah... Besides that, we also have um, Uncle Grandpa, which these two shows are just paired together, aren't they? Like, I mean, they air every single day, <laughs> it seems. And it's a new episode. I, I really do think they're just burning these shows. But Uncle Grandpa gets broken boogie. When the boogeyman loses his mojo, Uncle Grandpa steps in to help, which is the boogeyman? Okay. Um, does, I think that's like the monster that jumps out of your closet and startles young children which is pretty vague but <laughs> what can you do um uncle grandpa once again weird show but i heard the third season is better than the past two because it actually has i don't know like not even like continuity or anything just it's better like i don't know how to describe it i've actually have watched an episode now of the third season compared to the first season oh man it is a thousand times better um but on thursday we have clarence just wait in the car which as mary runs errands clarence waits in the car and struggles to fight boredom now from what, like what i've said i haven't watched clarence but from what i understand it's very slice of life so i think that the whole idea of that's a very relatable situation like even whether whether i like clarence or not i think i think that's a very relatable situation we've all had to wait in the car for a parent doing something we might have gotten in trouble and sent out there or we might just be like oh i don't want to go inside and help you with like shopping or something like it is something that i think a lot of kids can relate to and i think i think that's a good plot for an episode just showing a cartoon character going through the same thing if they do something interesting if they do not it will easily crash and burn but as I said, it, it's it's really dependent on the on how they actually treat it once it's out, because as it stands, like just the description alone isn't that interesting, but it could be. That's the thing. So yeah, that that out of the way, we have Uncle Grandpa's episode, which Uncle Grandpa's Uncle Grandpa, which Uncle Grandpa is in trouble. If only he could call an Uncle Grandpa for help. Is this? So is, like, an Uncle Grandpa, like, an actual, like, job? Is it, like, something that people do consistently? Like, they're like, okay, I'm gonna be an Uncle Grandpa when I grow up. Did, it, I don't know. Like, like I said, Uncle Grandpa is a weird premise, but that, that title alone has to be interested. Like, I just want to know, is there a place where you can learn how to be an Uncle Grandpa? Is it... Are there many Uncle Grandpas? I know they had like an Aunt Grandma episode, but she was like this kid who hated Uncle Grandpa and had decided to become like this logic person. But Uncle Grandpa is one of those weird premises. Like he's like this real, like as the Steven Universe crossover put it, he's like this reality warping weirdo who you have no idea if he's safe or not. You can't tell if he's going to like really mess him up and there's also a bit of a bit of a creepy vibe around uncle grandpa i think that's what turns a lot of people off the silliness and the just some of the subtext there is it's unintentional but it comes across still so but still like even i as someone who doesn't really care about uncle grandpa am actually kind of fascinated by that title like did Uncle Grandpa have an Uncle Grandpa as a kid? Is he going to be like some really, really old man who's like going to be even crazier than our Uncle Grandpa? Or are they just going to be like, is he going to call on himself? Is Because it can go anyway. Uncle Grandpa is weird. Um, but yeah, that that is 
all we have until Friday, where we finally drop a clearance episode. Instead, we have Teen Titans Go Blaze. Teen Titans become hackers to stop a gang of computer pirates. Now, this sounds like an interesting premise, but we all know what Joe is making it, so it will be panned. I. It, it's not. You don't even have to say Teen Titans is bad anymore. Like it. It. It just is. <laughs> There's no way to escape it. Um. No, I. I find. I find I often like the ideas behind Teen Titans Go. Like when it when I was first heard about it, it said Teen Titans Go is a show that's basically showing what the Teen Titans do when they're not fighting evil and fighting crime. Like yeah, that sounds interesting. That sounds like something that is worth a watch, but it, it's just Teen Titans Go has really good ideas and concepts, but when they put it into practice, it almost always fails. Like it's just, it's almost painful sometimes how badly Teen Titans Go fails, but I I don't know, like, when I first hear, heard about it, I thought Teen Titans Go, okay, we have the Teen Titans, but we're not going to focus on them, like, fighting the evil crime, like, fine, that, that sounds like a decent and interesting premise, but like I said, it just, it's never pulled off in practice, because in theory, it's really good. Um, but yeah, then we have Uncle Grandpa again, which is transitional phase. Life in the RV is interrupted when Uncle Grandpa and the gang get mysteriously, keep mysteriously being sent back and forth through time. I don't know, there's something about these lesser cartoons, like these ones that aren't as well received and are aimed at a much younger demographic. They all have really good concepts behind them, but like I said with Teen Titans Go, in practice they just can't pull it off, and... It's kind of saddening because I don't want, like, a show to fail just because it's, like, different. Heck, I would have given Uncle Grandpa a chance if I was in the age demographic. Unfortunately, it had already premiered by the time that I had started watching. I actually think I saw a bit of it um, when I was younger, but, like, it just turned me off. The moment I saw it, I was like, no, I don't, I don't want to watch this. So... Yeah, I, I think they're just trying to burn it right now to make room for OKKO. OK they seem to be doing Uncle Grandpa a bit more than Clarence, but Clarence does not have as many episodes left. I have to remind myself all the time. They seem to keep moving the, the episodes around, so... I don't know. When those two shows air their season finales, I'd assume... I'd, I'd really assume they're not going to get the send-off that even regular show got, where regular show was aired in that month. They're going to get even worse of a send-off than regular show. There's not going to be anything nice like with Gravity Falls where they aired it for three straight days for the finale. Like, it's not going to happen. I, I can't see it happening. But when it's over, it's over. I don't know. Well, will you viewers missed it. That That's a question I should ask. Will, will you look back at Uncle Grandpa and be like, that was a show I grew up with. Kids today won't experience Uncle Grandpa. No, that's not true. I don't think I don't think anyone's gonna miss Uncle Grandpa when it ends, but I don't know. I don't speak for anyone but myself. So for all I know, lots of people enjoy it. It does get decent ratings. There's bound to be someone out there that enjoys it and has fun watching it. But hey, that's that's the way things go. Sometimes they're successful for you, sometimes they're not, but it seems like the majority of people really can't get behind it. Um, but that's it for the week. We also have just the weekend where we have Saturday, which is usually when Nick decides to air its new episodes, where we have Bunsen's Beast Ball and Bromeo and Juliet from Bunsen is a Beast, which is Bunsen's Beast Ball tells him and Mikey to do fun things until Amanda swaps out the ball for one of her own. And then Mikey wants the lead role in the play so he can kiss, get a kiss from Sophie Sanders, but Amanda plans to sabotage his chances. Now, Bunces and Beasts is one of those shows I've been meaning to check out, just to see if it's my cup of tea or not, but, I don't know, these premises are interesting at least. Bunsen's Beast Ball, I think, is probably going to have something to do with, like, you know, those eight balls that you'd shake and then it would tell you some sort of dumb fortune that was so vague that, or it would tell you something to do something or not, like, kind of like the magic conch, although 
nothing will ever beat the magic coin. So it's just the perfection of that. <laughs> um, no, Bunsen's a beast, and then Bromeo and Juliet, like, having not watched the show, is this, like, a whole, like, Helga from Hel Hey Arnold situation where, like, the villainous character is in love with the main kind of dweeby lead? Is that what we're going for here, or is it something else? Like, I feel like it is that. Like, they're trying to go for the whole this Amanda character likes actually likes Mikey. Um, but who knows? Um, what else do we got here? We also have SpongeBob SquarePants, which is weird. It's airing from its next season. Which is weird. This is not from the season that they haven't finished their I think it's their ninth season. This is like from the tenth one. So they're airing an episode before the season finale of the last season, which Okay, um, sure, um, it's Spot's Return, Spot Returns, and the checkup, and this is, after the, his pet amoeba, Spot has puppies, Plankton decides to use them in another of his nefarious plots. And if, the second one is, Mr. Krabs is afraid to get his physical, but if he does not pass, the Krusty Krab will be shut down. Now, I don't know, Spongebob Squarepants is one of the shows that I used to watch. I think everyone's watched at some point. I don't really watch it now, but Spongebob is Spongebob. Um, I heard it got better since the creator went back on the show, but hey, like, Spongebob is just one of those shows that's just gonna be a time capsule. People will remember it years in the future, but as for, um, the two episodes, I kind of like the concept of SWAT Returns, especially if you know what an amoeba is. <laughs> um, but um, the checkup is kind of weird. I don't know how failing a physical will result in the Krusty Krab being shut down. Like, is it is Mr. Krabs required to run the Krusty Krab, or can he fail his physical and have someone else run it in his stead? But I don't know. Like, I, I don't. I find, like, Spongebob tends to just vary on what it's doing. Like, it can decide when something is relevant or not. Like, it's one of those shows. Like it or hate it. Um, but that's it for this week. Um, Cars 3 is the movie that was opening last week. Um, and we actually don't have any animated movies this week. But I do have the reviews for Cars 3, which is middle of the road. It's not Cars 2. It's kind of just like Cars again. Like The quality that I would give to Cars, I'd give to Cars 2. That's basically the critical consensus of it. Now, this may change because I am recording this before the Thursday night screenings. As of right now, it holds a 66% on Rotten Tomatoes, which... I'm gonna just guess will change, it will either go up or down, but it's not as bad as Cars 2, but it's between Cars and Cars 2. Cars and Cars 2 are the worst received Disney movies, by the way. It's somewhere between the two, which kind of just tells you exactly what we're in for with Cars. I don't know, did Incredibles 2 I want, because I... I I've always wanted to see what they can do with the future characters, although a lot of people seem to think it's going to be the Underminer. And that I don't know if they know what a triumphant return of a character is. Like, I think the best example I can think of is, you know, the Rhino from Amazing Spider-Man 2 that was featured so heavily in the trailers? Um, yeah, he's not... Like, if, if they had not featured that so heavily in the trailers, it probably would have been received better, but it's called a Hero's Return. It's a writing device where you just have, after their lowest moment, you have your hero return for a triumphant fight to show that they're back. It's just, they're not going to win anything, they're not going to show the entire fight, it's not going to come up in a sequel, although it may or may not be touched on again. Um, it's just kind of an event that happens, that's the best way I can put this. It's just an event that happens to show, hey, your, hero aren't, your heroes aren't just going to sit there now moping or waiting for things to happen what so I, I think the Incredibles 2 I'm excited for but as for as for you know Cars 3 I don't I don't think anybody wanted a Cars 3 people didn't really want a Cars 2 either 
there are a lot of other Disney movies that people are like, okay, I'd like to see a sequel to this or not. It, you don't really see cars usually listed on that. But, yeah, I can't think of too much else. Um, Cars 3, it's just, it exists. It's now part of a Cars trilogy, which is really weird to say. We now have a trilogy of Cars movies. What a time to be alive. <laughs> um, it was clearly to tell, sell toys, to remind people of the brand. Kind of like Planes was initially. But, yeah. Um... But yeah, that's actually it for movies and stuff like that. Now to my main topics for the night, which um, I'll just kind of go in order. But I think the one I want to touch on first is I have now seen all of Steven Universe Wanted. Like, I have seen every single episode. I have seen every part of it. It's just, it's good. And, I, and I'm really happy with how how everything went down with um how they resolved things. They didn't really resolve things. They left things open-ended, but please, for the love of God, do not leave this plot left hanging open like they did with the rubies. That will result in probably one of the worst fandom backlashes known to man. Oh, the fandom was already pissed off that they didn't go back to space to get the rubies, let alone if they just leave Lars on Homeworld. But what can you say? <laughs> like, like I'm so far behind that everyone's talked about this already, so I'll probably keep this brief. Um, after the trial, and we get to meet, like, the off-colors, it's pretty much one episode just divided in half, and Lars dies and is resurrected and find out Lion's origins. It's all good stuff, but what happens here is we actually, like, we actually get all these very interesting new characters that I'm actually somewhat excited to see um, return. I'd, I'd actually like to see Pad Paracha again. I'd like to see uh, all these characters. Um, I think one of my favorite ones from the entire from the entire thing was seeing um who was it um just like seeing all these weird um that we're not alone, the Crystal Gems. Like, you know how Jasper mentioned off-color? Like, heck, they call... Holly Blue Agate calls them off-colored. Those, um, home homeworld amethysts that were made on Earth. And, like, the Jasper... No, it was the Jasper she called off-color. So, we now know that's, like, a massive insult. Like, if you're called off-color, you're basically being called useless. And it's being said that you don't have a function in homeworld society. So just in general, it's kind of this nasty terminology that they have. It's kind of like this home. It's kind of like this fantastical racism without having racism. Um, it's anyone who's different, anyone who's like. I, I, they're very clear analogies for things like special needs and like Garnet was um, same-sex romance. Um, and then like there's like this massive gem called fluorite who is like this just relationship of multiple like gems which I, I don't know what's that supposed to represent in like the real world but it's a thing that exists i guess um no what's what's interesting about this is all these characters are very i don't want to say like how would i put this they're not I don't know how to describe them. They're they're just like these homeworld gems are kind of weird. Like they're not like what we're used to in the show. So when you do see these characters, you're like kind of taken aback a little bit, but not not to massive levels. Like it's kind of just like I don't know, like like the, when you meet Fluorite, for example, Fluorite is a very, very, very weird design. It's kind of like if one of the gems was Alexandrite right off the bat. You're just like, it's kind of baffling, not because it, not because it is like a fusion of multiple de gems. No, it's just like, they do not look normal. Like larger fusion, fusion gems, like I think two gems, three gems maybe, is where the, the kind of cutoff point for like these monstrous gems are like, 
I remember being shocked when we first saw Alexandrite or Sugarlight or um even like characters like who was it? Um Malachite was one of the early ones that I was like, whoa, that is weird. You are weird. Um Yeah, I think I think they did that on purpose. I think they purposefully tried to have these characters that did not look normal by like our own mental standards we kind of look at like characters not like Pad Paracha which who looks like a sapphire she's just kind of like an off sapphire like you can tell there's something wrong with her but um no the weird thing is like seeing this fluorite who is this just weirdly massive gem it, you're, it's kind of baffling right off the back that and it's kind of just like Ugh, like, I, I shouldn't find you hideous, but I do for some reason, and I don't like the fact that I find you that way, but hey. She's, she seems like a decent character. The kind of, like, slow talk is kind of weird, but what are you going to do about that? I'm not making the show. Sometimes you need a little bit of an odd gem, kind of just to show that things aren't as perfect all the time, like, I don't know why she's talking so slow as she is. Is that representing something? Because I know this show loves to, like, just represent things like groups that aren't really shown in media very often. But, I don't know. I find... I found all the homeworld gems, though, like, these, these off-colors to be very charming when you got to know them. Like, I think they're just supposed to look weird when you first meet them. And I think that effect really, really echoed with me. Because, like, they're weird. When you first meet them, they're really weird. And you're like, ugh, I don't want no fluorite. Blah. But then, once they begin talking, and once they begin communicating, you get to understand who they are and what they're doing. You come to really appreciate the characters. And I think that's their purpose, was that you're supposed to judge because they're off-color. We're supposed to look at them and be like, oh, that, that character's weird, but like anything when you get to know someone it's always better you always understand things better <laughs> i don't know i'm rambling now but more exciting news that i haven't talked about in the last three podcasts is um star vs source of evil has its third season theme song out and a lot of people are speculating that marco lives on Mimi now for some reason which would be interesting because we've seen before that marco is out of his element on Mimi and just like stars out of her element on Earth. But yeah, I, I think I think a lot of people are reading a bit too deep into the theme song. <laughs> like we never saw bunny pirates and um We never saw these like rabbit pirates when until like season two where randomly one gets turned into a carrot. That was weird. Um no, like I think the theme song is just supposed to show a general idea of what's going on in the show. Not supposed to be like the finite last word. So, yeah, Star Wars Force of Evil, I'm, I'm, it's a back, it, it's back, and it's nice. I'm kind of excited to go and see see what they do with this next, because I really liked um, the Season 2 ending, and it looks like they're going to reunite Marco and Star. I don't know if they're going to do it right away. It's definitely going to happen since they're both main characters. But are we going to have a few episodes where they're separate, or are they going to be separate for this, like, first half of the movie like what's what's going on here because that movie's two hours long you can easily do an a and b plot with that i'm actually hoping they do one in the current day and one like with queen moon I, i'd actually like it if marco went after star since he does have dimensional scissors so it could easily work that way but it does look like we have a broader main cast this season that's being going to be established more by the looks of it it looks like it's going to we're going to see a lot more of the characters who are right at the end, which means Marco, Star, Tom, um, oh, what was the blue-haired girl's name? I don't know why I'm blanking on this, but, like, she was in that relationship and she was great. I love that character. Um, she has, like, a giant sword now, like, when she was fighting the giant monster. <laughs> um, yeah, um, what else? Um, so Star has that going for it, but there's also, um, Beyond that, we also have um, Ponyhead that's going to be established more. We, we see a couple more dimensions in the theme song, and Janna, of course, is in the theme song. Jeez, Janna really became popular <laughs> after the last season. 
like, I know Jan has been popular this entire time, but gee, she's gotten really popular in the last few seasons. The last season about, it was, it was really cool to see that. She, she'll have, like, a more expanded role on this theme song. Now, um, I'm wondering if they're gonna do, like, an ensemble, like, Avengers-style thing or not. I'd be fine either way. I... I like Star and I like all the characters that they set up, whether they be good or villainous. <laughs> like, I know Tom was antagonistical in his first appearance, but after that, he became, like, a really nice, well-rounded character. But, yeah. Star is nearing its, um... It's nearing its third season, which premieres July 12th. I assume when that happens, they're going to... I was thinking they were going to advertise the DuckTales reboot, but that looks like it's coming out in August, so it looks like Disney Channel's doing some movies this summer, and that will be their main focus. So I'm thinking that what will happen is we'll see um, advertisement for the DuckTales like, movie when um, that DuckTales... What was it? It was like... The, the first episode is called Woo Woo Woo. So... They're, they're doing a pun on the title right away, but... Um, I think that they're going to advertise that when the Star movie premieres, which means they're going to do a lot of advertisement for this movie, because Star is one of their bigger shows right now. So I'm happy to say, Star, at first, when I watched it, I was like, I don't know if this will catch on. Like, I personally enjoy it, but I'm not sure if everyone will. Um, what ended up happening with that is just... It's blown up in popularity. I remember when it was first being shown around, it was like, this is the next Gravity Falls, but it's actually kind of become that. It's actually kind of become, like, it's kind of filled that hole. And it, I, I'm, I'm thinking Star, since it does have a fourth season coming up, it will continue to fill that hole for a little while longer. How much longer is up for debate, but hey. Um, we also have the DuckTales theme song, speaking of which, um, which that just keeps looking better. I love the comic book tone they're going for. I just love it. And, man, am I excited. Like, didn't think I'd get that excited for DuckTales, because I never really watched the original. But here I am, actually kind of excited for the original. Um, now what needs... DuckTales was one of those shows that I was meaning to watch, but never really got around to it. Like, I didn't have those channels. I grew up after the time where it kind of aired on TV. So, yeah, like, every, everyone who's like, oh, it was so good, it was... I don't know. I, I've never watched it before. <laughs> but I'm actually going to watch this reboot. Like, I might go back and check out some of the original DuckTales, too, just to compare and contrast the two. I think this one will be good, I just don't know how good. Like, I'm thinking it will be really good, but I, I don't know. It, it, it could be, it could do anything. Now, actually, yeah, that the theme song is so catchy. Like, I already knew the theme song. DuckTales is kind of well known for its theme song. But yeah, like, I'm excited. I rarely get excited for reboots or sequels or anything like that so here i can't wait um yeah ducktales premieres then we have actually that that does have a premiere date it premieres on august 12th and the series premiere is set on september the 23rd which is going to coincide with the 30th anniversary of the original show which is really cool <laughs> Sorry, I have a cold right now. I keep getting sick. It's the summer and I keep getting really sick. Um, yeah, I actually got through that pretty much faster than I thought. I spent a lot more time talking about the premieres this week. Um, actually, the one thing I really want to talk about here is, um, E3 was recently here and we got some, we got some new stuff with Cartoon Network's um, Steven Universe Save the Light and the new OKKO OK game, which was hosted by Andre the Black Nerd, which uh, I, I only know him from the Nostalgia Critic crossover of the Smurfs, too. And, and like, his, his Smurfs review and his Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, too. That's all I know him from, which is 
kind of sad because he does have a pretty prolific channel from what I understand. Yeah, no, he was he was doing demonstrations at E3 of the entire of, of those two games and they look really good. I'm actually really excited for this. No, I I, I think um I kind of wish they were on the Switch the games because honestly I'm a Nintendo kid. I usually play on Nintendo consoles, so yeah, like just just seeing um just seeing that PlayStation exclusive kind of bums me out a little bit because I'd really love to actually play that game. I really like Attack the Light. Attack the Light was one of my favorite mobile games there for a while. My favorite mobile game is Kingdom Rush, but Attack the Light was, I'd play that thing all the time because I really like that kind, that style of game. So yeah. Now, um, yeah, from what they showed, just the art, everything, I, I, I'm like in love with this. It's just, it's really cool to see that we're actually trying to make good video game based off TV shows and I really like how Cartoon Network's approaching this like cross-platform media. I think it's really starting to pay off when they have games that really go well with the whole video game format. Um, yeah, I'm not sure how it would have worked when they didn't. Like, like I know Steven Universe references video games a lot. Okay, KO okay, oh, amazingly does it so much. Um, and then we have we have, um, what was it? The really cool detail, like, about OKKO was, um, what they did with it was they decided, um, okay, we're gonna make this, since the vi show references video games so much, they were going to make it, um, what they decided to do was make it so that the game referenced the TV show, like, they do different angles, it was really cool. And you got a bit more details on OKKO OK in general. And then I've seen a couple trailers. I heard that the first few episodes are up on the app right now. Which, sure, I, I kind of don't like the app, but at the same time, it counts as viewership and it's a way for people to watch their shows without television. So, I can't really complain, but OKKO OK looks really good. Like, I thought the pilot was good and I thought the shorts were good. I'm just crossing my fingers and hoping that they do the whole, um, when they'd animate it through different studios. I really loved that. When they were animating this part, okay, we're going to do this part, this episode's going to be in this style, and this episode's going to be in this style. It really gave the show a unique flair that, even if it didn't have it, would have looked unique already, but, oh man, I am just, it's just like, <laughs> I'm so excited. Um, but yeah, OKKO OK is premiering this August, and I'm super excited for that. I can't wait. Um, yeah, I really haven't been this excited for a show for a long time. I'm kind of, I'm kind of happy that I'm going to get a video game show, and then can't, can't reference this anime. The voice acting is really good, although they've listed KO has two different voice actresses, which I'm not sure how to take that. <laughs> Does this mean, is this a good thing? Does it mean that we're going to get a bunch of painful references? <laughs> or that she's just like, I don't know. Okay, KO okay, is, I'm so excited for it, but I don't know anything. I don't want to spoil myself. I'm just going to wait for the iTunes um, release, and then I'll be watching it. Because... Oh, I, I'm so excited to see what they do with this in a full series format. It looks like they're going to go with the whole level up thing, which I think is a really cool angle to take this at. Um, because I think, I think, I think the way like you level up in video games lends itself a lot to this. I kind of like what they're doing where the characters in the show know they have trading cards. I think that's really funny, and I think that <laughs> Leet lends itself to a lot of comedy and really cool visuals. Like, imagine if you could level up in real life, like, if you were drawing and you suddenly got plus five drawing skill, or you got plus eight this, or plus nine this. Like, it's a really cool thought just to think, oh, imagine if I had my own trading card that 
was all about me that showcased my talents and <laughs> set. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just blabbering now. No, I, I <laughs> I'm so excited for this. Okay, KO is just one of those shows that I, I, if it doesn't do good, I'm gonna be so disappointed. Um. No, I. Not much to talk about beyond that. Like, once again, I just kind of like try to speed through these so I can get to them all, but I don't. So now I'm just kind of just yammering again. <laughs> oh, actually, there's one more thing I did see. I did see um a trailer for that new Spider-Man, but in this one he didn't look as choppy. So was it just that scene? Was it unfinished animation? Um, that Spider-Man show that I was like. Oh man, this is not gonna. This, this is like it has promise, but I don't know. Yeah, I don't. I, like earlier, I was just like, oh, this is so ugly, blah. But now I'm looking at it, and I'm like, wow, this is really looking good. But ugh, I'm so excited for this year. Spider-Man, um, is just one of those characters that. I, like, has he not been off the air for, like, the last few years? Like, he's just one of those characters that kind of just dominates cartoons all the time. He's one of those adaptable characters that just keeps appearing. So, he'll just probably keep appearing. Uh, but, yeah, this new Spider-Man series, better than it did last time, which was his fight with the Scorpion. So, I'm not sure how exactly to rate this because on one hand this isn't really that good on the other hand oh it looked passable but then again they were kind of doing close-up shots and they were making a joke about how no one knew spider-man's name that was kind of the gag they kept doing in this show so i kind of like the angle they're going for here where it's spider-man trying to establish himself as a superhero as the main topic of the show instead of it just being He's a superhero. Uncle Ben died. So I'm not... I don't know if we're going to see Uncle Ben die, but... Hey, if you're mad about... I don't know, Spider-Man Homecoming and how that rendition of Spider-Man looks, I don't know. This one could be your cup of tea. It might not be, so... What can you do? No, I think, um... I think it'll be decent, at least. I'm not thinking it'll be terrible. I think... I think... I think it will go over well with audiences. But it's too early to tell. Like, it's coming this summer. I didn't hear advertisement about it until recently. And the one ad I saw was not very good. And the second one kind of was a one joke pony. But at the same time, there's some really interesting stuff they're doing here. That I really just look at and I'm like, okay, yes, you're doing something right, Spider-Man. You're doing something right, but on the other hand, it's it's just those elements I keep mentioning with the animation and the way it just It's honestly just the animation. I, I think that's the only problem I have with it. Please don't let that be the way it is. Please let it look more stylized in the show. Let let it be one of those things where you're kinda of, it's kinda of uncanny at first, but you get used to it. Just let it be something that isn't just, you know, lazy and kind of phoned in. I'd hate that. Because we haven't... Spectacular Spider-Man was really cancelled before it's time, so just the fact that we have a new Spider-Man series that could have the potential for a running plot... I, I'm kind of like, uh, please... Please don't let this be exactly what I think it's going to be. Which is just another Spider-Man reboot that just sits there for a couple weeks and then goes away and never to be seen again. Vanishes into the nether. But, there's nothing you can really do about that. Spider-Man... Ah, at least it's not another Teen Titans Go. I don't know. But I do remember Hulk Agents of Smash was just, like, awful because they kept... It was like someone watched Samurai Jack and just said, hey, I want to just do the fancy angles, but didn't know anything about cinematography. 
Yeah, that that that's what that show was. So Marvel hasn't really had a good run with TV shows all the time. So yeah, there's kind of this internal conflict where I'm just like, there's some nice things, but do I really want to give it a chance and just have it blow up in my face? I, I think I'll watch it at least. So I think Spider-Man's an iconic enough character that he deserves at least a watch. Just, I, I like the take they're doing. I just hope it's pulled off well. Like I keep saying, there's... A lot of these shows have really good premises, but in practice, they're just awful. And I'm hoping that this one is able to pull things off. I really do. Because if it's not, ugh. I don't think I can handle it very well. But, yeah. What else can I talk about? I only have a couple minutes left, but... I don't know. Cartoons, are, like I said, Disney XD is kind of just advertising stuff, and then Cartoon Network's trying to end two of its shows, and then Nickelodeon's doing whatever. <laughs> I don't know, I could talk about pilots coming out. I kind of do wonder if we're going to get Infinity Train next year or so. I think that's been greenlit behind closed doors. I think they're going to use it. They're going to surprise us with it. They're going to probably, um... I don't know how the pilot went over so well and they keep airing it on TV. I got a notification on Facebook. I'm subscribed to Adventure Time on Facebook. I, I like their page. And they let me know that they aired the pilot again on TV. So there's continued interest from Cartoon Network. They keep airing the one pilot on TV. I can totally see this becoming a show. I can totally see it having been greenlit and they're just airing the pilot so that it's in people's memory. Because if, if it's anything like the pilot, that means that this show can easily sustain itself. It doesn't need to be tagged along with a premiere of something else just to, you know, get off the ground. It doesn't need to have that jump start like they're trying to give, um, even DuckTales. Like, they, they want to attract their current audience into it. No, the current audience for Cartoon Network clearly is supportive of Infinity Train. Like, it honestly just got another run through on just the network, and I think that's really cool. But, once again, there is there is one problem, which is, when? Are, are they saving it for when Adventure Time ends? Is, is that the plan behind it? Are they saving it for when Steven Universe ends? Are they going to announce it when the OKKO premieres? Are they already halfway done developing the show? Are they... Questions all over the place, I don't know the answers to, but... Man, is it exciting. It's a really good time to be an animation fan with this stuff, like the kind of some of the stuff that's been promised to us. No, if they don't take advantage of Infinity Train, I'd be shocked. I'd honestly be absolutely shocked. Is this made by someone from Regular Show? Regular Show just ended. Those people who worked on Regular Show are not going to be working at the moment. You have. <sighs> You have this pilot continuously being aired. You have a lot of staff, which is from regular show, that's... You're not going to just boot them. You're going to want to keep those people working for you. All the chips are in place. This thing is getting greenlit. I think it is. I think the staff from regular show migrated there. I think the staff from Adventure Time, which finished its recording, is going to migrate there. And I think it's going to be their next flagship. I think that they know that Steven Universe was under the thumb of... I think they knew Steven Universe was under the thumb of Adventure Time, and I think that they're planning a new flagship series. I think they're... Well, a group of flagship series, I should say, at least. Um, what I mean by that is... So, we had Adventure Time, Regular Show, and Gumball when that was all there. And people tuned in in the droves. Like, they're trying to repeat that, I think. I think they're going to do it with OKKO. OK and I think they're going to use... They're going to use Steven Universe, which is deep into its run, as a launch pad for this. 
I don't think it's gonna come out of the blue. I think it's very coordinated right now. I don't think that OKKO is suddenly being greenlit now for an August release. Kind of out of the blue, I will add to you, is not somehow going to tie into Infinity Train. I think that OKKO is going to be the first premiere, and I think that they're going to have a couple more. Because I think that they know Teen Titans Go will not sustain their audience forever. And they kind of want to get back into both. They kind of want the critical and the commercial success. And, I don't know, OKKO OK seems like it can be a commercialized show. It seems like something you can easily say, okay, this is going to be successful with the games, with the toys, with all that stuff. But then you look at something like Infinity Train, which I think is going to be their critical success. I think I think they know they have something, and I don't think they're going to pass it up. No, I think I think I think they're trying to spur another era, like they did. Like I remember a few months ago, everyone's like, "Oh no, what's going to happen next?" You now that Adventure Time and regular show and Gumball, which is ending question mark. No, um. Suddenly we have Infinity Train, we have all these shows that, if they're not greenlit already, they're definitely going to get greenlit, and if they aren't, I'll be shocked. No, I think, I think we're going to get Infinity Train this year. I think, I think it's coming, and I don't think anything can stop the hype train. The hype Infinity Train. Sorry, I just made that pun. <laughs> Sorry, I really got blown my nose, but I don't want to stop talking. No, I'm just kind of wondering what would be their next show. What, what what would you what would I put next on that list? What what would I also add there? Because I had a certain number of pilots recently, and I can see them doing another mini series. Because Adventure Time mini series are really popular. Over the Garden Mall was really popular. I think they had Long Live the Royals. I don't know about that, but. Cartoon Network has had success with miniseries, so I think they're going to continue that. I don't know how much, but I can totally see it. No. Wow, oh, there's so many shows that are just in the future right now that I want to get my hands on. I want to get my hands on DuckTales. I want to get my hands on... There's a new Craig McCracken show that's under wraps that's being worked on. Like, there's so much I want to just figure out about right now, but I can't because I don't really have a way in. Let's get Tangled the series back in June. Or not June, in July. So, that's pretty much the next Disney premiere. Otherwise, we're kind of just waiting on, you know, DuckTales. I don't know, Disney Channel tends, to, Disney XD actually kind of has this kind of mixture where they'll air some shows on like a schedule, on a solid, well-rounded schedule that will be consistent, that you can consistently rely on, that's like Star Wars Rebels. Then they'll have that sporadic, out of nowhere kind of schedule. So what exactly we're going to fall into here is kind of a big question I have right now. Summer's not a good time for that because Star Wars Rebels is really off the air at this time. Oh, actually, speaking of Star Wars, there are some shorts coming out this summer because... I, I forget what they're called. Um, they're the... Like, they announced them at Star Wars Celebration. They, like, focus on various characters like Princess Leia or Rey or all that. And they're, like, three-minute animated shorts. So I can see those popping up soon and being kind of a draw. I don't know, Dave Filoni got promoted to the head of Lucasfilm Animation, so I can easily see, um, can easily see this going well. He, he's a really great, like, he's a really good showrunner. Because he actually moved from the direct involvement of Star Wars Rebels into, like, more of an executive position, and it retained that quality. I, in some instances, it went up because he's still involved in the show, like, He'll say, okay, yeah, he's kind of like, how would I put this? Like, you know how Butch Hartman is involved in the shows? Like, how there's that, he's usually on the crew, he's usually developing something, yeah. Butch Hartman, kind of that way. But, yeah, I think, I think I'm gonna wrap it up here. Um, 
a lot of good stuff in animations right now, a lot of stuff we're just waiting for. But in general, I think it's a good time. I don't, I don't think anything's terrible right now. But yeah. Not much else I can say. Yeah, I think I think I'll just end it here. Here are a couple other videos here. Um, let me know what you thought in the comments down below. Let me know if you'd like me to cover any shows I didn't on here. And I'll see you guys next week for more shows and premieres this week. This might series might waddle a bit in the summer though. So see ya. Bye.